Ronnie Shakespeare, who chairs the Committee Against Torture in Bahrain, joins us now from London on the phone to tell us more about the developments in Bahrain. Ronnie Shakespeare, first of all, to start off, Bahrainis have once again both taken to the streets. They're slamming the Saudi occupation. Why is it that the world does not hear their voices in this case? Uh, firstly, the Bahraini Democrats is the most extraordinary phenomenon which has ever been seen in human history. When you look at the percentage of the population on the streets of Bahrain, and that is when they can be killed on the streets of Bahrain, there has nothing been seen like it uh, before. As for the reason why the world is not taking any uh, interest, uh, it is because of a c corruption. And I take the example of UNESCO at this moment daring to associate uh, with Bahrain. UNESCO, an organization concerned with the promotion of culture, is associating itself with a government which at the very least is committing a cultural genocide. UNESCO is a dishonest, venal, corrupt organization. And if they don't like that, they're going to have to explain how it is that they are deliberately forwarding the case of Bahrain. They are deliberately associating, calling to Bahrain, putting it as chair of its committees, and in effect telling the world that Bahrain is a, is a, a place of peace and culture. Putting Bahrain on the UNESCO committee is like putting Hitler or Genghis Khan on a peace committee, and you know the result of that. Though I have to notice that the Nobel Peace Committee did award the Peace Prize to somebody who is a perpetual warmonger. I refer to President Obama. But let UNESCO tell the world that it is not corrupt and then explain why it is consistently dealing with Bahrain and has done so since March when it knew that they were torturing and killing. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's look at UNESCO's case. I mean, uh, I'm looking up uh, what UNESCO stands for, encourages international peace and universal respect by promoting collaboration among nations. Uh, when we hear about uh, the hypocrisy that's involved uh, in so many respects, of course, around the spectrum of Bahrain when it comes to either the United States or the West, as many have cited, including human rights organizations, and then we see what you have referred to as uh, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. How much longer, given Bahrain's case, and given the other cases that are happening in that world, can this continue, this, uh, uh, in a way, the double standards, or uh, as some go as far as saying hypocrisy? Well, UNESCO is the promotion of science and culture for the purpose of justice, peace, justice, and human rights. Now, there's simply no way that you can associate with a, a corrupt regime, a torture regime, and a genocidal regime, which is raising mosques, uh, preventing festivals, beating up mourners when they're trying to bury their loved ones, uh, and which is putting on trial uh, yesterday a 15-year-old boy, and which gets get hold of girls who write poems and puts them to torture and imprisonment for a year. There's simply no way. So you're looking at a profoundly corrupt organization. But I say it, there's only one explanation for UNESCO's behavior. It is corrupt. And let them... Well, perhaps they'd like to sue, like Bahrain. I mean, Bahrain is trying to sue Robert Fisk of the Independent, but of course they'll get nowhere because Fisk speaks the truth. And in my case, if they say that I've lied, the answer is they've got to make the explanation for why they are daring to associate with a genocidal regime. And this is a cultural organization. They cannot make an explanation which any reasonable person would accept. Okay, and finally, before we let you go, Rodney Shakespeare, tell us what that case involves in terms of what uh, uh, Robert Fisk has stated. I believe uh, it's in reference to the uh, charges against the nurses and doctors. Robert Fisk, who is the most well-known correspondent on the Middle East, and he's universally honored by all papers and all decent people, he just asked the question. He just said, have the caliphs gone mad? And he was referring to the 46 or 50 doctors and nurses who've been tortured and put on trial for actually helping wounded people. Those wounded people, by the way, have been disappeared and have probably been killed. But the point is, these uh, doctors and nurses were upholding their usual Hippocratic oath, or if you like, they were just ordinary decent people doing what ordinary decent people do, that is to say, help uh, the wounded. Now, Fisk said that for 
the Bahraini regime to torture and imprison those people and put them on trial before a military tribunal, they must have gone mad. I can find no other language except to say they have gone mad. Okay. And that's the end of the subject. No okay. decent person would think otherwise. Okay, thank you very much. Rodney Shakespeare, Chair of the Committee Against Torture in Bahrain from London, with uh, his uh, take on developments in Bahrain. Thank you.